I have a lot of patients who come and see me with neck pain that is radiating down the arm. This condition is called cervical radiculopathy. It is usually because of a pinched nerve in the neck, either due to a bone spur or a herniated disc. There's an excellent surgery for this condition. This is called anterior cervical discectomy infusion. Basically, through this surgery, we unpinch the nerve by removing a disc in the neck and we stabilize that level by fusing it. And today, I'm going to show you how this surgery is done step by step. I'm making this video for my patients who want to know more about the surgery, see how it's done. So I'll take you through it step by step. And also for patients out there who are dealing with a similar problem and are debating whether or not they should have the surgery. So today I'm going to show you the case of a patient who had a pinched nerve between the C6 and the C7 vertebrae in the neck, pinching the C7 nerve. The C7 nerve comes out of the neck and goes all the way down into the forearm and the hand and can cause some severe pain, numbness, and tingling. So um, without further ado, let's get started. The first step is to place the patient on the operating room table after they've been intubated and they've received anesthesia. And we check an x-ray from the side. And we put a marker on the skin and make sure that we know where the C7 vertebra is, so we mark the skin. And similarly, we put another probe on the skin to mark where the C6 level is. After we figure out where the C6 and the C7 vertebra are, we make a small incision between those two points, we get down deeper on the spine, and very carefully we take a tiny needle and we put it into the C7 vertebra and check another x-ray from the side. Now it's very important to make sure that you are the correct vertebral level because of course you don't want to remove the wrong level disc. Now after you've confirmed your level you focus all of your attention at the C6 and C7 level. So the next step is to create some space between the C6 and the C7 bones. And how do you do that? Well the first step is to take a small threaded pin and put it into the C7 vertebra. Similarly you take a second pin and you insert it into the C6 vertebra. Next you slide a distractor over these pins and apply a very minimal distraction, maybe one or two millimeters, to gently open up this disc space. This allows you more space to work and this also allows you to open up the nerve so it is no longer pinched. Next, using a series of different instruments, we remove the degenerated disc between C6 and C7 and we remove it all the way to the back of the vertebral body. It's very important to remove all the discs because the nerve lives all the way in the back, right over here at this point. After you have removed the disc, we use special instruments to unpinch the nerve and remove the bone spurs that are pinching the nerve. So at this point, the C7 nerve has been freed up on both sides. Now you're left with an empty space where the disc used to be. So the question is, what do you do about it? Well, you have to put a spacer over here, otherwise the two levels are gonna collapse. And you have to put a spacer of the correct size. So the way we do that is we have a series of uh, spacers, uh, trial spacers that we put in sequentially and we see how snug the fit is. When you finally find the correct fit, that is the size of the spacer that you need to put in there. So in the case of this patient, we used a six millimeter spacer that gave us a very good snug fit, both by tactile feel and by looking at it from the side, by the x-ray. So next we remove the trial and we select a piece of bone, a cadaver bone graft called the allograft, and just gently tamp it into place until that bone is in the center of the disc space. And at this point, you check another x-ray, make sure everything looks good. You remove the distraction pins, the threaded pins that you put in earlier. And the next step is to put a plate in the front so that you can stabilize this whole construct. It's very important to select a plate that's neither too long nor too short. So you take the plate that you think is going to work, put it in the front of the neck, and put it on top of the vertebrae, and secure it temporarily with a temporary fixation pin. You check an x-ray, make sure it's of the correct length. Next, we take a drill and drill into the C7 bone, take a small uh, screw and put it through the plate and secure the plate against C7. We put a second screw into the C7 vertebra and similarly, we put two more screws into the C6. At this point, you tighten, tighten all the screws, make sure that the whole construct is nice and tight. You look around to make sure that there's no bleeding and after checking everything to make sure it's okay, you close up the incision. After waking the patient up and reversing anesthesia, uh, the patient will be probably in the hospital either overnight or discharge home the same day, depending on how they're doing. They're wearing a soft collar and recovery in general for 
patients who have an anterior cervical discectomy infusion surgery is very rapid and very successful. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to share in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing from my viewers. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you could give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.